that, that, that picture is not good. <laughs> JC and I also wanted to share the exciting news that um, we got last week with the group, which is that the TCGA team has been named as one of the 2015 Service to America. Oops, I just didn't mean to do that. There's my whole talk. Um, service to America medalist, or what they call the SAMIs, sometimes affectionately called the Oscars of the federal, federal government. government. Um, and so we had uh, several exciting events, including going to the Nationals game, where we met Miss America, but did not take our picture with her, and also Screech, the mascot, who we did we, selfie with. We met Miss America, but we didn't figure out that she was Miss America. <laughs> she was standing with the crown next to us, scientists as we are, we didn't know who she was. No, <laughs> we did not. Um, but anyways, and so the, the, um, we're one of 30 finalists. The awards will be given at a gala in October. Um, and we wanted to take this moment to mention it. It's a little awkward to talk about your own award, but really because JC and I very strongly believe this isn't an award for JC and I. This is an award for the entire TCG a team from you know everyone who's been involved from 2006 to the present and many of you are here and so we just want to take a minute to congratulate everybody for the recognition we're getting for basically the service that we are doing for America Yay. okay so um, I, I'm going to just give a brief second part of the update of activities. And again, um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Carolyn Hutter, and I'm at the National Human Genome Research Institute. And so my focus is obviously on the sequencing aspects of TCGA. So as JC noticed, noted, we're done with almost all production and sequencing production for the whole exome sequencing has been completed. And our focus right now with the whole exome sequencing is actually on what we're calling MC3, so slightly convoluted multicenter mutation calling multi-tumor completion. Basically, we had something called MC2. We needed a new name. We went to MC3. Um, and our goal is to generate a high quality mutation call set for the TCGA cases, really building on what we've learned through the multicenter mutation calling or MC2 exercises done to date. We'll have standardized calls across tumor types. We're working on containerizing the established mutation calling tools so they can be run in different environments and, and um, work. And this is really work being done through um, groups at UCSC, WashU, Baylor, and the Broad, um, and British Columbia. And in the end, it'll really help facilitate some of the pan-cancer analysis. I also want to mention, because whenever we talk about being, production being done, the people on my production call remind me, we actually have a huge production effort left in um, doing tumor-specific validation efforts to support the AWG marker papers. So those 13 marker papers that JC had mentioned, we do, um, we do additional targeted validation exercises on somatic mutations and some germline mutations that are found. And we'll continue to do that through the completion of those projects. Um, in terms of whole genome sequencing, um, we have whole genome sequencing on 24 tumor types in TCGA, 14 of which we have more than 40 cases per tumor type. Um, the last cases are some of these that JC was talking about that are getting some top-up sequencing and will be uploaded this month or into June. And in the progress of TCGA's continuing adaptation of some new technologies through the project, these last ones are actually being sequenced on Illumina X10s. Um, most of the samples in our whole genome sequencing um, are actually being analyzed as part of the, uh, the ICGC TCGA pan cancer analysis of whole genomes, or the PCOG project, as we call it, um, which was actually featured as a major symposium at this at last month's AACR, where Josh Stewart, who will be here these next two days, and some of the other steering committee leaders gave talks. And I think there's going to be some really exciting work continuing to come out of this project over the next year. Um, in terms of future programs, as JC mentioned, there's not a TCGA 2.0. NHGRI's large-scale sequencing efforts are going to have an increased focus on Mendelian and common disease, but then, as JC also mentioned, there's lots of applications of cancer genomics and genomic medicine, and an exciting area provided pending appropriation, <laughs> of course, is the Precision Medicine Initiative.
So um, in talking about efforts with um, increased focus on common disease, part of that is thinking not just about the somatic, but also about risk. And I wanted to give people a heads up that um, NCI, Leah Mechanic, one of my colleagues who will be here and her others in in NCI are starting a challenge stimulating innovation in breast cancer genetic epidemiology. And so if people are interested, you can watch the website or you can email me um, for some more information and I'll connect you to that as that gets announced. Um, in terms of the precision medicine initiative, it was alluded to in the State of the Union address and then announced formally by um, President Obama on January 30th, 2015. At NHGRI, we particularly like this picture because the DNA molecule there is actually Eric, uh, Eric Green, our institute director, it hangs out in his suite, and he got this last minute request, oh, can you get that down to the White House? And so, first of all, if anyone's ever tried to understand what it takes to get something into the White House, it had to go through intensive security. And then if any of you are like me and have ever tried to travel with one of these models, they're not designed to go on the road. So lots of packing tape and boxing and all of that happened for our DNA molecule model to have its day in the sun. Um, but it was a very exciting day um, because that's again where Obama mentioned his current budget um, is including a new precision medicine initiative that is hopefully bringing America closer to curing diseases like cancer and diabetes and giving us all access potentially to the personalized information that we need to keep ourselves and our families healthier. Just quoting President Obama there. If you want to find out more about this initiative, I'll direct you to two places. One is the New England Journal of Medicine Perspective that was put together by Francis Collins and Harold Varmus that came out the same day as the president's announcement. And then also this website on the bottom, NIH is keeping a very good um, website, including information on upcoming public workshops that are, that'll keep you posted as we hopefully get to move forward with this exciting initiative. And that is it for me and my announcements. So I'll turn it back over to Katie.